right, so let's begin the show today with our uh, segment, Meet Your Fund Manager, where uh, the fund in focus will be a large cap category and we're talking about uh, PGM India large cap fund and to discuss more on the fund and uh, the market movement, today I have with me Vinay Paharia, CIO, PGM India Mutual Fund. Vinay, good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, yes, we'll be talking about your large cap strategies in the fund, but then before that, because we have you on the show, it becomes mandatory to ask about or discuss about the market movement also. Uh, we had a great start of the week today and uh, we've again seen the undertone bullish uh, of the uh, bulls taking over the market rally today but then uh, 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 looking at today's run-up uh, what would you like to call it just a one-off event uh, uh, you think the market has actually shrugged off all the geopolitical concerns or uh, uh, there aren't any uh, concerns for uh, for, in terms of our domestic triggers for our markets we bothered about. Uh, hi, good evening, Kavita. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, so I would want to answer it in this manner. Uh, generally, it's impossible to predict day-to-day -day movements in stock prices. Uh, and it becomes much more clearer, predictable, and, uh, uh, and uh, easier to understand when we zoom out. So the more we zoom out, the more it becomes uh, clearer. And, and when we zoom out, we can clearly see that India's growth as an economy is far, far superior to global counterparts. Our nominal GDP growth rate is expected to be in double digits, significantly higher to most of their global counterparts. And corporate profit growth just mimics the underlying nominal GDP growth. And on top of that, for especially large caps, we have valuations which are more or less reasonable. And hence, when we look at the markets, we clearly see that markets are more or less uh, following the fundamentals. And, and hence, uh, broadly, we're not surprised by what the markets are doing over the last one year or six months. Hmm. Vinay, now uh, uh, because we are focusing on the large cap category uh, and talking about your fund also, but before that, talking about large cap as a space, okay, uh, uh, we've also uh, uh, seen FII selling coming in, in, in past few days and uh, when this kind of a movement or uh, 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 event happens, we see a pressure coming on the large cap category most of the times. Uh, looking at the current sell-off that we've seen from the FIIs, you think the comfortable valuation uh, that right now is there in large caps would get dissolved or any more pressure further because we are just seeing the large cap story picking up and you know the comfortable valuation and attractiveness is just coming on board even from investors point of view. But uh, uh, any trigger due to FII selling or uh, are you seeing it getting intensified going ahead because of the bond yields and other inflation concerns and rate cut concerns in the global markets in the US? Uh so, uh, Kavita, the way we look at uh, markets uh, movements or, or expectations, uh, generally markets trail earnings. So if the underlying corporate earnings growth is, let's say, 10%, your expectations for market returns should be 10%. If the expected growth in earnings is 15%, you should expect broadly that sort of uh, uh, returns from the market. Whatever happens in between, uh, say, for example, as you just talked about uh, FII selling, liquidity-driven selling or buying or some other events which are not going to have a material impact on the earnings, according to us, all of those are either buying or selling opportunities because those present uh, events which are different and don't impact fundamentals and hence should be looked at by long-term investors as opportunities to either buy or to reduce exposure to equities. And hence, coming to your question, when we look at uh, some of the foreign investors selling, uh, and because of that, uh, stock prices being available at attractive valuations, then those are clearly opportunities to increase your investments in those space. So I think use all of these uh, events as opportunities to your own advantage. 
uh, how are the Q4 results uh, uh, looking to you so far? Because we've seen all the IT and the financial sector uh, results coming up because that's like uh, th that's that's the first tranche of results uh, uh, that sets the momentum, uh, you know, uh, for the earning season. Uh, how, according to you, how would you like to uh, evaluate the set of results which are out so far? So broadly, the IT sector clearly appears to be in stress not out of the, out of the woods uh, business growth is weak and uh, expectations are also muted uh, discretionary expenditure from clients has has not picked up as it was expected by most of the market participants and hence while it sector has got derated a bit in the last one year uh, we think it's still not a great time to go overweight this sector we are underweight this sector uh, as far as uh, the financials sector or most of the lending uh, financials who have reported uh, till now, we are seeing uh, better trends, which means uh, companies are able to grow their deposits, which was one of the biggest constraints of uh, business over the last one year. And uh, because of this superior accretion of deposits, we are seeing lending financials being able to now start uh, increase their lending exposures also. The NIMS are not under as much pressure as it was expected. And uh, clearly, the credit costs are very, very benign. And hence, the overall returns on equities for the financial sector has remained more or less robust. And I think clearly that's an opportunity. And we think clearly financial sector, and especially the lending financials, are, are presenting good opportunities for investors. We are overweight uh, uh, in terms of lending financials. All right. Uh, how are you placed in your large cap fund, um, uh, Vinay? Because uh, uh, I think IT software has almost, uh, no, banks is 25%, IT somewhere around 10%. Could you just break up the top five sector exposure? Yeah, I think the way we look at sector exposure is how much overweight or underweight we are relative to each sector because some sectors would be clearly very large, like as you rightly said, financial services as a sector is pretty large, uh, more than 30% weight, and rest of the sectors are all between 7 to 10% weightages. So the way we look at our exposure is how much overweight and underweight we are relative to sectors. And uh, based on that, currently we are more overweight um, healthcare sector. We clearly see lots and lots of opportunities in the healthcare sector. We think that it's a uh, it's a sector which has got very structural tailwinds, and there are a lot of opportunities in the in the healthcare sector to build the portfolios. So we are overweight healthcare sector. Uh, we are overweight the telecom sector because there as well we clearly see the market structure uh, supporting the the listed companies, and we see that there is a potential for non-linear increase in profitability in many of these companies. So we are overweight the telecom sector as well. And to some extent, we are overweight consumer staples, predominantly the consumer retailers. Sure. Uh, do you think it's a time for an investor to increase their allocation in large caps? Why an active oh, absolutely. fund? absolutely. That, that's, that's the most important part of the question. Why an active fund? <laughs> sure, sure. So I think uh, there are two parts to this question. Does an investor need to invest in a, uh, in a large cap at this point of time? Absolutely. Uh, in the last one year, clearly we, seen ha we have seen a significant rally in the small and mid-cap space. Uh, we have seen markets running ahead of fundamentals in, in, in the small and mid-cap space. So just to give you some data uh, for the Nifty mid-cap index, from the period uh, 2000, uh, March 2018 to March 2023, the index delivered 9% return and the underlying profit growth was also very similar at about 9% growth. Uh, in the year March 20, in the fiscal year 2024, the index in the mid cap side delivered 59% return for a profit growth of just 29%. Similarly, on the small cap side, we saw the index delivering 62% returns for a profit growth of 24%. So clearly, the benchmarks or the indices are clearly running ahead of the underlying profit growth in the small and mid cap side. But that's not the case in the large cap side. Uh, the magnitude of outperformance of large caps 
compared to the underlying profit growth is is much 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 lower and absolute valuations for the large caps also remain more or less in comfort zone so on a relative basis we think large caps are uh, are are a much better and an attractive investment for investors currently in the current market environment to your second question why active or do you need an active fund i think uh, one of the clear uh, choices for investors in large cap space is to also look at uh, passive funds because uh, historically large caps is the only segment where passives have delivered superior return compared to actives and and the magnitude of uh, outperformance which actives can generate in the large cap category is limited having said that it also depends on how different the fund managers construct their portfolios compared to the benchmark which we call as active share so the higher the active share higher is the potential for in, for the fund manager to deliver superior returns and that is an area which we monitor very closely our objective is to have a much higher active share compared to the peer group and and this active share should help us deliver superior return compared to the benchmark over a longer period of time so in summary investors should not look at it as an either or opportunity in the large cap space they should be constructing their portfolios uh with both uh, the active portfolios as well as passive portfolios all right i think that will be all because the time is up but then i do have more questions for you but maybe in the next session of our discussion thank you so much vinay for being on the show and helping our viewers with their large cap strategies today thank you thank you